There you go, that's Alec Neal walking on to the Norwich City team coach. Of course, Norwich City have lost here at Rotherham 2-1. They've lost to the Championship's bottom side, a side that had only won three games, I think it was, before today. Uh, and Norwich have been beaten by them. And the atmosphere around this place is a little bit buoyant, even though they know they're in a desperate situation. For Norwich, they're in a desperate situation of their own. And for me, I, I know it's looked very unlikely, but this side is not going to finish in the top six this season. And it's probably worth a few people... Um, they can't give up, obviously, but and if, if I'm proved wrong, brilliant. But I think we uh, better prepare for maybe a, a longer run in the championship than, than just this season, which hasn't happened for some some time. This was inherently predictable. I think after Norwich's slightly bright start, as soon as Rotherham got a foothold in the game, that was all it needed. A couple of long balls, they'd already you know, caused Norwich the odd problem on the break before Tom Adiemi set up uh, Yates for the opening goal after just seven minutes. It was well made from Tom, of course, a former Norwich City player. who had a, had a great afternoon of it uh, and he scored the winner in the second half too. Great day for him and he, he left with Wes Houlihan's shirt. Um, coming up against one or two players that he, he'd been in the squad with back in the day when he was at Norwich and it was a great day for him. A great day for Paul Warren, the Norwich-born Norwich fan who is now in charge, reluctantly, apparently, of Rotherham United, although he does seem to be enjoying it now, and he's going to be in charge for the rest of the season, uh, the rest of the season too. So that's that's a a win really made in Norwich for Rotherham. Uh, but as I said, as soon as Norwich got behind, it really took until Nelson Oliveira and his silly little sending off for, for reacting to a challenge. Once he'd done that, he got sent off. Norwich basically felt like they started uh, needing to play. And that was a major issue because, of course, it was too late by then in reality. And even aside here, you're, you've got 10 men. Rotherham, they, they upped their game. They had something to hold on to. Aside, even though they looked edgy, they looked like they wanted to really, really dig in. Now, Norwich did play quite well with 10 men, it has to be said. And you could just see if they played at that level with 11, this would not have been an issue. They'd have won this game comfortably, but they didn't play like that with 11 men. And then when they got down to 10, they started playing. Even Russell Martin, Martin, Martin said it himself. So God knows what he must be saying to his teammates and, and I guess to himself as well, because it's the players who are not delivering. But of course, in that situation, short of selling all your players, which maybe Norwich will consider given what they're doing with Martin Olsen, I don't know. But... Uh, the manager has to be has to be held responsible for it too unless you decide that he's going to be your man anyway and he will rebuild the side for you which maybe is what Norwich need to do but ultimately they have to be honest about that rather than having a chief executive who's saying promotion 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 because there's no way that that's the aim uh, if if this is all or to can or to continue so some major issues for Norwich to address of course on the flip side if for all you want to say about Alec Neal and the fact he may still be learning, he's inexperienced, this, that, the other. Uh, Norwich City had a, um, had a fitness guy, uh, Rotherham, sorry, had a, had a fitness guy in charge who didn't even want the job. And he's had about nine games in charge. And he had a side that dug in and showed a lot of desire and heart. I mean, Norwich gave a react. The bizarre thing is Norwich gave a reaction. It was just too late. And again, what does that say about their attitude that they couldn't do it from the first whistle? They ended up with obviously 10 men, but Stephen Naismith in a holding midfielder, a holding midfield role. Carl uh, Lafferty, Cameron Jerome, uh, Alex Pritchard, Wes Houlihan were all on the pitch as well. Uh, and they did really pen Rotherham in, but it, they couldn't uh, conjure up a, an equaliser, which ultimately probably would have only papered over a few more cracks. <laughs> The obvious question is, do I think Alec Neal will still be in charge for Wednesday? Yes, I, I just can't see the appetite in the board for sacking him. And it's not like all 1,600 Norwich fans here vehemently chanted from start to finish that they wanted the manager to go either, which I think is interesting. But clearly out there in social media land, there will only be one answer. Uh, so we'll see where we go, other than, of course, to Southampton in the FA Cup. And then Paul Lambert uh, will be ringing his wolfside to Carrow Road next weekend. I mean... <laughs> Paul's been here before with Aston Villa. <laughs> I'm sure we'll uh, get to enjoy his uh, his fun and games again. But I mean, you could you could get down about these things, but ultimately, I, I think there's a sense of inevitability. And when you get that, you probably might as well smile about it, mightn't you? Hello, everyone. Uh, it's very cold. I'm not wearing my hat yet, but it is very cold. Here we are. The New York Stadium with its lights on. I'm joined now, look at this, by Paddy Davitt on Facebook Live. That's 
the only thumbs up you'll see with <laughs> from anyone in Norwich today probably Pad. Just trying to keep warm mate that's my priority now not uh, not what happens to Alex Neil. <laughs> it is very cold so we're going to keep it a little bit brief but we thought we'd do one live hopefully we won't get run over by that car now coming um, Pad your verdict on that uh, one one word I heard someone say just same again as if we'd sort of kind of been here before what do you feel yeah yeah that's a fair comment isn't it and it's the manner of the capitulations as well you know we're so good we'll play with 10 men seems to be the motto of this Norwich team you know we've seen it too many times and we've seen it again today total total lack of discipline from Nelson Oliveira of all people and it's cost them again because for effectively 70 minutes or so they play with 10 men then they get themselves back in the game and then they, they knock off again and concede as they have done every every seemingly weekend it feels like this season um, yeah so uh, Neil out was the chant of final whistle and speaking to him after the game I think he probably just needs a little push now because he seemed to be very resigned to me. You know, I'm thinking back to to draw a parallel. Boxing Day at Reading. Funnily enough, another self-inflicted blow. Johnny Housen getting sent off again. They'd kind of got back into it. Again, they've been beaten. Uh, but even then, he, he, there was a defiance to him and he still felt he was the right man. Uh, never going to quit. Those sort of sound bites we've heard too often. But today, no, nah, he was just, just resigned. Fed up. Like he'd had enough, so... We will see what the next few hours and days bring. I can't see him physically resigning. I have to say, I've no, just he said won't resign, no. he won't resign. No. As a note on here on Facebook Live saying, uh, use a fun filter to uh, make yourself look fun. Do, do you fancy doing that now? What us or Alex now? <laughs> oh yeah, Take more than that, mate, I think. Yeah, quite. Um, Johnny Housen's injury—that's that's a worry. We, we sort of heard it's a confusion different, it's as a well. Confusion. We've heard different things in terms of what it is. Tend to go with your version, but Alex, whether this was symptomatic of his scrambled thinking, he definitely told me it was a calf. Um, but you saw him with a boot on, so. Well, we'll see. But either way, if he's out for a period of time, it's the last thing. he's literally only got Alex Tetty. I think he's his only midfielder now, which is why he brought him off yeah. early to try and protect him with two big games coming up. I mean, really, obviously that isn't within Neil's compass. Although some would say, well, you need to have the squad to cope with any eventuality. But it, it just feels it's all feels that it's it's kind of going against Norwich and this this Norwich era and. Um, I think we're in the final throes of it now I think ultimately and, and it all flows into it it's bad decisions from the management bad decisions from players during games injuries the odd harsh refereeing decision Alex Neal again felt particularly on that Oliveira incident Broadfoot was equally culpable but as we, we've seen pretty much all the time it's the retaliator who normally goes and um, he's, he's obviously lashed out and that's what the referee has seen Um but again, it just yeah, it just feels like you know as we stand outside here at, against the team who've uh, I think they were twelve points away from safety at kickoff, <laughs> so they've won a game against the Norwich team who supposedly uh, have a squad to compete for promotion. Not going to happen. I have to say, as as a Norwich lad, there's something quite nice about Paul Warren and Tom Adiemi yeah. doing really well today. I, I feel that. Oh no, agreed. I mean, I'm not from Norfolk, but um, I mean, it was brilliant there, Paul Warren. It sounds like his dad isn't too well at the minute. He didn't elaborate further, but he had to check himself because his voice started cracking up in with the print boys. He was very emotional, um, talking specifically about he's Norwich, his family in Norwich, his brother was here today, his best mate was here today. But ultimately, that, that they're pulling for him and, and they wanted Rotherham to win, but you couldn't meet a nicer fella. Um, and that is the only, for me, positive light from a Norfolk perspective on this weekend that, that here at least there's two lads from Norwich who will enjoy their night but uh, the team they support sadly Tom Adiemi as well the team they support in a bit of a state well uh, we can unless there's anything else you want to say look forward to Southampton now on Wednesday look forward to it yeah we're, we're 400 mile round trip to probably see uh, I don't know what under 18s have Norwich got because I don't think you'll be seeing too many senior players there, given the fresh injury doubts. Martin also maybe throw that one in. Obviously, oh, yeah. events might overtake us, but as it's as we stand here outside freezing, um, talks ongoing. Uh, he's obviously down there now in Wales. I mean, the Welsh media this morning was saying it's probably going to happen early next week, and that probably is going to be the timeline. Um, but of course, what that left today was Stephen Whitaker playing at left back, and he was involved in both the, their goals. Sadly, so it all flows into this kind of sense that you know Alex Neal is is not really in control of events so whether he's in control next Saturday I'm not too worried about Southampton it's Paul Lambert and Wolves next Saturday Carrow Road 
The script is written. I don't know what it's going to say, but it's already written, probably. Uh, they're clearing up. Um, should, should we clear off, do you think? Is there anything else to say? No, no, no. no. Let's go home, mate. We're going to go home. Hopefully, it'll be safe. Hopefully, well, I don't think we're going to get any snow, so we should be all right. Uh, thanks for checking in. We'll try and do more of these. And don't forget, pinkin.com will have all the analysis, more of it, uh, over the weekend. Um, we'll log off. Let's log off. Cheers, all. See you later.